So we're thinking about people's preferences over these lotteries, over these different, uh, well, <clears throat> we have uh, the set of Z of possible things that might occur, elements Z in, little Z in Z. And um, we can think of these lotteries such as P, which maps from every element in little z to some probability. Every little, you know, every outcome that can occur occurs with some positive or not non-negative probability. Okay. So how do we think people sh should weigh these different lotteries? Well, it's hard to say. Should we think of a lottery as just, you know, should we think of this, this uncertain out set of out probability of outcomes, possible outcomes? Should we just think of it as a good like any other. I might prefer something that has a more likely bad outcome to something that has a more likely good outcome, or should we impose some structure on it? So the first thing that we, that we considered was the uh, continuity property. And then now the second thing that we're considering is the independence property. Okay, so we had continuity, now we're considering independence. And if you look at the uh, Osborne Rubinstein textbook, it the independence is defined in quite a uh, nutation heavy way, I think. But I think it's it's can you can see this more simply. Okay, so basically, what they're saying is that independence means that if I add something. If I add a lottery that's, that's, if, if I have a lottery and I take one, one possible outcome in that lottery and I replace it with something uh, where, if I replace it with another lottery where that lottery is worse than the original outcome in that state, then there then i then that is worse or weakly worse okay so here's how it works so we have this notation for compound lotteries which you should make sure that you that you that you can understand compound lotteries being sort of thinking about building portfolios in finance uh and now we have uh we have lotteries we have the outcome Z, uh, we have possible, all possible lotteries over outcome Z were notated as big L of big Z. This is all possible lotteries over, over outcome Z. And we can have a preference relation over all of these possible lotteries and this preference relation satisfies independence if the following holds. If whenever we swap in something for something else and the first thing we swap in is worse, the lottery is perceived as worse. Let's, let's you know, so it, with respect to certainties, it's quite, it was quite natural to imagine that if I, it, it, it is quite natural to imagine that some, some certainties are just worse than other certainties. Um, and we'll get to the idea of continuity over certainty also. But with lotteries, we, again, we didn't, we didn't make any, we didn't impose any structure until we imposed this idea of continuity and now perhaps independence. Okay, so we can have one lottery with, this is big K here. So we have elements, all sorts of elements of that lottery. We, we, we went over the notation. And note this element in particular, one particular, any arbitrary element, outcome ZK realized with probability alpha K. And then we also consider this other lottery where, uh, I didn't write it here, but I believe that beta is strictly between zero and one. Okay, so here we're considering a case where we have one outcome which occurs with some non-zero 
probability and some outcome which occurs with the other not with the remaining probability. Okay. Now independence is succinctly, well, somewhat succinctly and precisely defined as the following if then statement, which will or actually goes in both directions, if and only if. Okay. If we have some certain outcome ZK that's weakly preferred to some lottery, beta probability of A and one minus beta probability of Z of B, then if I swap in this lottery for some element of the original lottery. So now I have this compound lottery, right? This is here is the compound lottery, right? So we have alpha probability of Z1, same as here, alpha two pro probability of Z2 perhaps, dot, dot, dot. Here we have alpha K probability of ZK. Instead here we have alpha K probability of this other lottery, right? And of course you could reduce this to a, a simple lottery, you know, because we know that if there's a, probability alpha k of having probability beta of alpha, there's probability alpha k times beta, sorry, if there's probability alpha k of having this lottery which has probability beta of outcome A, that means that there's alpha k times beta probability of outcome A. But for now, just think about it as with, instead of with probability alpha k, instead of having this certainty zk, zk, we have this other lottery but we know this lottery is, is weakly worse. If we swap that in, then this new lottery is weakly worse. If you swap in something that's weakly worse, if you swap in, in fact, uh, and this allows the thing that you swap in to be, a, to be a lottery, if you swap in a lottery that's weakly worse, then, then, the, uh, then this new compound lottery is seen as weakly worse. And that is, the independence property, okay, and um, 